Oh, my ears and whiskers. And he has fangs? Good morning, little bunny. Stop. Why are you doing this to me? What do you want from me? Possibly your hand in marriage, sir? Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir Duvid and I am back in the cage from our heart cage because there have now been an update which promises more boys. So if you haven't seen the first video, there should hopefully be a link somewhere around here, either in the description or uh, on this video here. Editor me, I hope you remember to do that. But I'm just gonna, just gonna jump right in, just gonna jump right into anything that seems new. So let's see what, what our new friends have in store for us, or what our old friends have in store for us. <laughs> Hello. Hello? Excuse me, is anyone there? A woman was standing at the door of Clark Detective Agency. She looked anxious and kept ringing the doorbell. Mr. Clark, are you there? She shouted loudly, but the only answer she received was silence. Hey! Excuse me. Oh, hello. <gasps> He's so pretty! The woman was startled. She wasn't aware of anyone standing behind her. <gasps> Moreover, the man's shirt was covered with blood. Oh. The woman stood frozen in shock. Do you need something? Uh, I was looking for Mr. Clark for commission. It seems he's not in the office again. <laughs> Sir? Sid noticed the woman staring at his shirt awkwardly then realized he wasn't looking very presentable. He had just encountered a gang abusing animals on the street. In a fit of anger, he had left them all injured. Oh, don't mind the blood on my shirt. Sorry, I've got something urgent to do. I should go now. Before Sid could finish his sentence, the woman had already disappeared down the stairs. <sighs> Maybe I should bring a spare jacket with me next time. <clears throat> I'm back. As Sid opened the door, a pile of commission letters fell to the ground, all addressed to Clark. Boss? What's going on here? Boss? Hey, boss? Boss? He looked around the office, thinking his boss was just napping as usual, but he found himself alone. Even the person he was hoping to see wasn't there. Something felt out of place to Sid. Wasn't he the one who was always absent from the office? He walked to her seat and noticed the brief commission letter left on the desk. What's this? Usura Town? Uh-oh. Is he gonna come after me? Hmm, that was a great sleep. Huh? Where am I? Oh, right. I almost forgot about last night. All those, you know, traumatic events. Dane let me sleep over at his place because of the broken window. I normally find it hard to sleep over at someone else's place, but I slept surprisingly well last night. It's not like he laced my tea with something. All I remember from the night before was coming back from that near-death experience. Then Dane made me some tea. Then I fell asleep. Nothing special happened, I suppose. Oh yeah, they all did some kind of memory wipe thing, too. Mmm. -hmm. I got out of bed to freshen up, but I felt a burning sensation in my chest. It was like the previous morning. Hmm. This is strange. What's wrong with me? It wasn't only my chest. I could feel some kind of heat or energy flowing through my entire bloodstream. Did I catch something? I've never felt like this before. Fine. If it continues, I'll just go to the hospital. When I came out of the bathroom, I found that no one was in the living room. It seemed Dane had already gone off to work. Ooh. Just as I was thinking of going downstairs for breakfast, I noticed a breakfast set on the dining table with a handwritten note placed next to it. Good morning, Espoir. Did you sleep well? I'm off to work at the coffee shop. I've made breakfast for you. Hope you like it. Oh, Dane. P.S. Just leave the dishes on the table. I'll clean it up later. Dane. Dane even made breakfast for me? And it's a full breakfast. 
How should I repay such kindness? Also, he has such beautiful handwriting. It gives off such a gentle vibe, just like he does in person. With a heart full of gratitude, I picked up the cutlery and made a plan to thank him later. Oh my! It's incredibly delicious! I want to eat Dane's breakfast, ugh. Like, I know he's a Yandere, but he would just, oh, he'd be so pampering. Uh, but no, I gotta be attracted to the guy who said out loud that he wants to kill me. I felt happiness in each bite. It was so good that I hesitated to finish it. I know, Dane's a talented barista, but I didn't realize he's a good cook, too. And all the dishes happen to be my favorite. Did I ever mention that to him? Whoever he winds up with is so lucky. I wonder if Dane's dating someone. Or maybe he's, uh, stalking someone. Who's calling so early? Huh? Sid? It's my childhood friend and co-worker, Sid. He's an elusive agency member. No one ever knows his whereabouts, but he never fails a commission. He's been missing for a month. I almost thought he quit. Hi, Sid? Where are you? I went to another town on a commission. So, you're back in the office? Mm -hmm. That's great. I thought you'd quit. By the way, have you seen Clark? He's been ignoring my messages. He's not here. Ah, huh? Clark's not in the office? Why didn't you refuse? What are you talking about? Why did you take that commission? I didn't want to, but the money was crazy. The fee for this one commission covers the agency's expenses for years. And you weren't there, Sid. I was the only one who could help out. I needed the cash for my travel fund anyway. Just tell me if you need money, but why? You should come back now. I'll take over. Mm-hmm. No, I've decided to take it already, and... Sid, do you remember what happened to my parents? I discovered a dead body last night, Sid. And it's very similar to my parents' case. There's something going on here that I need to get to the bottom of. Oh, and by the way, I'm safe now. I don't need you to swoop in and rescue me. I'll be back in four months. I'll explain it all when I get back. Mm. Sid? Are you listening? Are you going to show up at my door? Actually, he probably is going to show up at my door. Ah, uh, fine. I'll get back to you later. Hey, don't get yourself in danger. Too late! I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'll be back soon. You say that every time, and every time you get yourself in trouble. Oh, no, really. I'm coming to pick you up. Uh-oh. That's it. Uh-oh. I don't think my four boyfriends are going to like that. Three. I don't think my three boyfriends are going to like that. Mm hmm. Ah, he's treating me like a child again. I really don't get him. Sometimes he disappears without a trace, and sometimes he seems pretty caring about me. You don't have to come for me. I'm an experienced detective already. I can handle this myself. Don't you worry. Okay. Just wait for me. <laughs> Sir, I said. I've told him he doesn't have to come. Ugh, whatever. But anyway, where did Clark go? Sid said he wasn't in the office. Is he here? Is he gonna simp for me too? I don't know how to feel about that. I've got a bad feeling about this. I wish he would reply to my messages. I've got so much to tell him. Just as I checked my empty inbox for the hundredth time, a news notification left me dumbfounded. Another horrific murder occurred in Usador town last night. The second case of heart ripping in a month. <gasps> Couldn't believe my eyes. <gasps> Wait! Second case? Huh? Hey, Sid? A phrase popped into my mind. Serial murderer. This makes me even more certain that it's connected to my parents' case. Calm down, Espoir. You've got to calm down. I took a deep, deep breath. I should analyze everything carefully. Perhaps the first case is what this W character wanted me to investigate. But there weren't any reports for the first case. My research yesterday confirmed it. Could the police be hiding something to avoid causing panic? Or is there some conspiracy behind it all? This town is so much more complicated than it seems on the surface. 
Or should I ask Mr. Luke first? He should know something. Besides, I want to ask if he can take me to the site of yesterday's incident for investigation. But I also have a feeling that I should tell Dane about this. He takes good care of me, and I don't want to get him worried. Uh, let's talk with Dane. Let's see what Dane has to say about this. Dane's, Dane's gone up and uh, be, above and beyond. I should talk with Dane first. I can't exactly put my finger on why, but I've got a feeling that I shouldn't keep secrets from him. And I don't want to get him involved in something dangerous because of me. I sent a message to Mr. Luke to ask about the case, then messaged Dane as well to see if he was busy. Dane just hurries up the stairs. Good morning, Dane. Thanks for breakfast. Are you busy? Espoir. Nope. I'll come up right now. <laughs> he just ran, just ran up from upstairs. Like, what did you, what did you need, Espoir? He's all out of breath. Shortly afterward, Dane ran up from downstairs. Good morning. Sorry, I didn't know you were awake. No, I should have gotten up earlier. Thank you for the breakfast. Did you enjoy the meal? It was delicious, sir. Sure, it was absolutely delicious. <laughs> Glad to hear that. Have a seat. I'll do the cleaning. Let me help, then. I can't let you do the dishes after you did all the cooking. Let's do it together, then. Oh. We stood side by side. For some reason, I felt a bit nervous. Um, Dane... I've got something I want to talk about with you. Hmm? What is it? It's about how the window in my room got broken last night. I told Dane what happened last night, and why I came to this town. Dane didn't say anything, nor did he change the look on his face. He just listened to me, quietly. That's everything. I'm sorry. I didn't tell you immediately because I didn't expect things to turn out like this. That isn't something you should say sorry for. It's just, your job is much more dangerous than I thought. <laughs> There's nothing really dangerous with my regular job. It's just a bit special this time. But I'm professionally trained. I can protect myself. Well, don't investigate this any further, okay? Huh? This is too dangerous. I know you're a capable detective. But investigating a murder case alone is a bit too much. Oh, don't worry. I have a clingy childhood friend who'll be here any second. What if something like yesterday or something worse than that happens? Oh. Uh, sorry. Are you still mad about the window? Should I move somewhere else? Of course not. And a broken window is nothing. I'm just worried about you. I don't want you to get in any danger. Dane, thank you, but this case means a lot to me. When I was little, my parents were killed in front of me, and the dead body I saw last night was killed the same way as my parents. Their hearts were ripped out, Dane. Although the murderer died at the scene, his motive always remained a mystery. The recent case must have some connection to my parents' deaths. This is the only chance I've ever had to find the truth and finally move on. Dane suddenly reached out and stroked my head. You've been through a lot all this time. It must be tough. Thank you for telling me. No, I'm just... I've been telling him everything without even realizing it. But why did you tell me all this? Because I trust you, Dane. Because I trust you. Though I'm really worried about you. I'm just a stranger to you, right? Well... I don't know either. It's like some mysterious force is forcing my hand and making me do things I would never normally do. Even though I've only known you for a short time, I feel like I can rely on you. And I feel sorry to have you worry about me so much. Really? Y you think I'm reliable? Do you really think that? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Does that make you uncomfortable? No, not at all. You can rely on me more. Aww. I'm really happy. I'll stand by your side since it's so important to you. I'm the witness to what happened last night. The murderer may come after me and put you in danger. Is it better for me to move out to keep you safe? <laughs> I'll never be in danger. Huh? 
Don't worry. No other place is safer than here. Oh. If that murderer really comes, I'll protect you. I won't let my lovely tenant be in danger. Oh, clingy landlord. Oh, Dane, what, what can you do? I'm kind of afraid. Uh, all right. Do you have to work later? Yeah, I'm going to do some investigating. Come with me, then. I'll make you some coffee before you go. Mm. I checked my phone. Mr. Luke had just sent me a message. It was confirming my suspicions. This was a serial murderer case, and they internally called him the Heart Ripper. <coughs> Mr. Luke, <coughs> would you please take me to yesterday's incident site? <coughs> I'd like to check if there are any clues. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Really? Yeah, sure. Let's meet an hour later. I'll come pick you up. Okay. Thank you. I didn't expect Mr. Luke to agree so easily. Is that okay? Alright. Maybe I should ask him when we meet. What you like today? Hmm, maybe a cup of... Ooh. Mocha. Yummy. Sure. Am I too early? Why aren't there any customers? Just when I was wondering this, a group of flashy-looking men came in. Oh, they looked familiar. Dane, good morning. Oh, my ears and whiskers. Ooh. And he has fangs? Sir, save some fashion for the rest of us. Four cups of latte with double shots, please. Oh, G Sharp, good morning. Cute. Did you stay up all night composing your songs again? That's right. My muse struck last night. Don't forget to add more milk for me. The man with a ponytail sat beside me, chatting with Dane with a big smile on his face. He exuded a mysterious charm that made my eyes fix on him. He quickly noticed my gaze, then our eyes met. Huh? What's up? What are you looking at? <laughs> uh, oh! Sorry. It's okay. I don't mind you staring even longer. Who are you, cutie? Gee, Sharp. Don't try to flirt with her. You've just come. <laughs> she's my new tenant. New tenant? <laughs> wow. So she's the first tenant in this building. <laughs> the first tenant? Hi, I'm Espoir. I just moved to this town and opened a detective agency upstairs. Wow, you're a detective? <laughs> you're so cool, babe. Why are you calling me babe? We've just met. I'm G Sharp, the lead vocalist of a well-known band. A band? Oh, you're the one on the poster. Yeah, that's us. Babe, are you interested in band music? Yeah, I love rock music. For real? <laughs> you gotta come in and watch our show. Promise? Give me your hand. Let's make a pinky promise. Uh, d but, but Dane is watching. Uh-oh. Gee, Sharp. Uh-oh. Dane? Dane? Don't go berserk a barrage on him just yet. I just met him. Just as my hand was caught by Gee, Sharp, Dane heaved the box containing four takeout coffees in front of us. Your order's ready. Why do I feel Dane's aura is different from usual? Thanks a bunch! Oh, Dane, your face looks so scary. Are you jealous? Nonsense. Boring. All right, uh, let's go. It's about time to do a rehearsal. I'll come play again. Let's hang out sometime, babe. Oh no! Don't forget to come to our show. Bye-bye! He's so cute! Bye! He, he's such a vibrant person. Sorry if he scared you. <laughs> it's just his normal behavior. Don't mind him. It's fine. It's fine. Do they come often? Well, G Sharp was a regular customer even before being the band's vocalist. So you've known each other for a long time? Mm hmm. He's actually my junior at the university. Hmm. Clues? The university. You must be very popular during university. <laughs> no, of course not. I wasn't very good at chatting, so I didn't have many friends back then. Hmm. I've heard something like this before. 
Hmm? Oh, Mr. Luke's calling. Dane, I should go now. Did I get my mocha? Thanks for the coffee. All right. Stay safe and don't be too late. Okay, see you. You don't think any of that's weird, Espoir? I met up with Luke near the scene of the incident. From a distance, I saw him standing there with his arms crossed. It seemed he had already been there for a while. Mr. Luke! Good morning, little bunny. Stop! Oh, you look great today. Did you sleep well last night? Yeah, I feel great today. That's good to hear. I like a playful little bunny. Sir? Let's go. I've already told others to stay aside. You can investigate freely. No one will disturb us. Okay. Although my mental condition has recovered so much, I still feel a bit nervous when I return to this place. Luke noticed my condition and patted me lightly on the shoulder. You don't have to do it today. Don't stress over yourself. I'm alright. It's daytime now, and with Mr. Luke here, there's nothing to be afraid of. Okay. Feel free to look around then. I'll be waiting here. Let me know if you need anything. Okay. Okay. Time to put on our Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney hats. Alright, where should I start? Ooh! Please click on the spots you'd like to check to investigate. Ooh. Ooh. Well, let's start with the, uh, this chalk outline. The corpse was already removed last night. Only the markings indicating the corpse's location remain. Hmm? I noticed something tiny and purple at the corpse's original location. Hmm. I picked it up with the tool I brought with me and placed it on a piece of tissue paper. It was a broken petal. Why is there a petal here? Did it fall from someone? Hmm. Blood splatter? The blood stains around the corpse have also been cleaned up, but there were still some traces. After all, the heart was ripped out. There must have been a lot of blood. I wonder what kind of tool the murderer used. Oh, that's all? Nothing about the placement of the blood? Okay. I'm trying to see if there's any hidden things. What's this graffiti mean? Alright, uh, posters? The back alley walls are covered with posters of the band Soul, reminding me of G-Sharp, who came and spoke to me at the coffee shop just now. Although he feels like a playboy, he truly has an irresistible charm that makes me want to watch his band play. Box. There were lots of empty wooden crates in the back alley. For some reason, I caught a whiff of some chemical when I walked close to it. Hmm. Are you going to elaborate? Okay. Uh... Luke. Luke, How's what's going on? How's it going, on? little bunny? Have you finished investigating? Yeah, I guess. I'm done. Hmm. Good job. So, how is it? This is your first time investigating a murder scene, right? Yep, there aren't many valuable clues, though. Is that so? Is there anything you want to ask, then? Hmm, let me think. Yeah, what, what is your purpose, Luke? Mr. Luke, did you get dispatched to this town to investigate this case? Not really. In this town, there's a lot of things that go beyond your imagination other than the Heart Ripper. However, I can't tell you yet. Mm. Like what? Supernatural things? <laughs> <laughs> You've got a good imagination. Who knows? Just remember, don't let a single case limit your thoughts. Mm -hmm. He's acting cryptic again. About the first case. What was the first case like? Same as this one. The victim's heart was ripped out. Hmm. The body was found in the West Alley by a passerby. The victims of both cases had moved to this town less than three months. Well, it may just be a coincidence, but you just moved here, too. Be careful, little bunny. Oh, no! Are you cursing me? About the investigation process. How's the investigation process on the police's side? <laughs> Not much, actually. First off, there's only a few people who have a connection with the victims. It's difficult for us to speculate the motive behind it. Second, the police cannot speculate what kind of weapon the murderer used. Mm. And not many of them take the investigation seriously. <laughs> what? It's a serial murder case. 
How can they not take it seriously? That's why I prefer to work with you, little bunny. <laughs> About W. Mr. Luke, have you heard of someone or an organization named W? W. I've told you someone threw a stone at my window, right? That stone had a signature W carved on it. I see. Well, there's a lot of people with names starting with W, but an organization? Didn't hmm. ring a bell to me. I'll keep an eye out for it. Oh, well, I've got no questions. It's strange coming from me, but... Mr. Luke, aren't you curious as to why I want to catch this murderer so much? I mean, why aren't you asking me anything? Little bunny, do you want me to ask you? <laughs> huh? Tell me when you feel like it. You must have your own reason why you won't tell me. I won't force you. Uh, why? Why do you trust me so much? We've just met. What you want to know is if I have an ulterior motive. Why did the music stop? I stood in silence. He was right. I averted my eyes, but he grabbed my shoulders. <laughs> I'm not sure if you'll count this as a motive, but... There's something I want. Oh no! What is it? He leaned closer and whispered in my ear. Little bunny. Your heart. <gasps> Was it you? Are you him? Are you him? Are you him? Are you he? Are you him? <laughs> do I sound like the Heart Ripper? Don't do that to me, man! I was shocked by the unexpected words from Luke and stood frozen. What do you mean? <laughs> Don't be afraid. I'm just trying to say I hope you can trust me with all your heart. He brought his lips close to my ear, his warm breath tickling me. Because I'm very interested in you. No matter whom you want to catch or what clues you need, I'll give it to you. <coughs> but you must never lie to me. If you lie to me, I'll eat you up any time. Sir? Sir, you're making it far too hot in here. If you obey me, I'll reward you. <coughs> Otherwise, I don't know what I might do to you. Oh, and one more thing. Once you've chosen me, don't bother anyone else. Greedy bunnies get slaughtered. Oh, okay. Okay, so he's saying if I choose his route, I better not I better not try to do anyone else's or that'll lead to a bad end. Okay. So you gotta be a good bunny, okay? Hmm. Stop! Stop! Yamete! I quickly pushed him away, just as I was losing my sanity. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. What are you doing? I have no idea what you're talking about. Stop fooling me around. And don't try to confuse me. I don't know what you've misunderstood. But there's one thing I can promise you. I want to catch that Heart Ripper more than anyone else. <clears throat> I just really like you, little bunny. I'm looking forward to our next investigation. Alright, I've got some work to do. Let's end it here for today. <clears throat> I'll contact you again. Sir? I watched Luke leave. My heart was still pounding quickly. So he was just fooling around. Even if he's the Heart Ripper, he couldn't have been the murderer in my parents' case. He would have been a little kid at that time. Unless it's a copycat killing, or a deeper scheme. Besides, I heard that he was on duty somewhere yesterday. He has a sound alibi. But in any case, he definitely has some suspicious motivations. He wants my precious little gam-gams. I'll have to keep an eye on him. If, if you don't want to keep an eye on him, I'll keep an eye on him. Ah, <laughs> uh, why does Mr. Luke have to flirt with me in such a situation? My heart was actually fluttering just now. This is insane. I've got to get back to the office to clear my mind and organize the clues. Hmm, what was that pedal? Before returning to the office, I popped into a nearby store for some water. Because you're thirsty.
When I was leaving, I heard the sound of an argument. A man with a video camera was trying to talk to a man and a woman. Uh-oh. I said, what was that chemical you had in your hands just now? We don't know what you're talking about. Go away. Don't play dumb. I saw you dealing with someone. A liquid that color must be something special. Can I have a look? I'll pay for it. No, please leave. Just a quick look, okay? Or you can tell me the secret of this town. I'm really interested. I won't put your names in my report. Get out of my way. The man pulled the woman onwards, and they barged past the man with the video camera before heading off as quickly as they could. Goodness. This is gonna turn out to be Silent Hill. Is there, like, ancient ritual things with the Chosen One, and then there's the drug trafficking doctors, and... Uh, and then there's gonna be, like, zombies and repressed uh, memories? That would be funny if this did turn into, like, Silent Hill, though. That, that'd be a completely different game, though. Tch. They don't have to be so scared. I finally come to this town. I won't give up easily. It's all for my new column. That person seems to be a journalist. What's that chemical they mentioned just now? The boxes in the alley smelled like chemicals. Hmm. Is it some type of drug? Hmm, the clues, the evidence. It's like I came for the sexy boys, but I will stay for the mystery. With a head full of lingering confusion, I returned to the office. An anxious man was hovering at the doorway. Uh, oh, um, is this a detective agency? Yes, how can I help you? C can you deliver a package for me? Mm. Huh? He wore a tattered hoodie, and his hair was so long I could barely see his face. Mm. Even so, I could see the beads of sweat forming on his face. Mm. Sir, you are being very sus. Are you okay? Would you like to come in and have some rest? Ah! The man didn't reply. Instead, he took a stack of cash from his pocket and placed it on my desk. Is that enough? That's a lot of money. That's a lot of muns, sir. Sir, may I ask what you're delivering? This envelope. P please, d deliver it to the address above. Please, don't worry. There's nothing suspicious inside, says you. Can you tell me what's inside? I can't accept so much money without a reason. I don't know anything. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, please, wait. I tried to catch up with the man, but he was too fast and disappeared as soon as he left the door. Mm -hmm. What's going on? He's running so fast. Oh, God, don't tell me he handed me a bomb. I gingerly looked down at the thin envelope on the table. It seemed to contain only a few sheets of paper. Ah, dang it. Even though I didn't really accept the money, I better see this through. If something gets weird, I'll just pull out. Mm. I took a taxi to the address on the note. It was surprisingly close to the office. We're a detective agency, not a delivery service. Is this the place? I stopped outside the given address. It was for a detached house with several floors. It's huge. The owner must be really wealthy. Oh, God. I hope it doesn't belong to some mafia boss or something. <coughs> After waiting for a minute, I heard footsteps coming. <sighs> I told you to just leave it in the mailbox. Uh-oh. Huh? That voice. Is that my boy? Mr. Enox? Uh... <laughs> huh? <laughs> Hi. So this is your house. He's like, lady, now you know where I live. You call my phone. You you stalk me in the streets, and now you're at my house. Get away from me. Are you the crazy stalker? Look at that face. She's totally a crazy stalker. <laughs> Enox abruptly slammed the door as if something had triggered his nerves. Huh? <laughs> oh, the boy, the poor, the poor young man. I heard a faint sound of something breaking inside the house. Then Enox cried in pain. <laughs> What's that sound? Did he fall? Mr. Enox, what happened? Are you okay? 
I heard a faint sound of something breaking inside the house, and then Enox cried out in pain. Mr. Enox looked disheveled and was panting heavily. Eh? Get in here! Uh. Don't mind if I do. Before I could react, he gripped my hand tightly and pulled me inside the house. Oh! Oh no! Mm. Mr. Enox, what do you want? What do I want? And, uh, what you gonna do with that syringe, buddy? That should be my question. How did you know I live here? Because the person who actually gave you that envelope was a spy. It was me to get her to come here. <laughs> no, it's not like that. I had no idea it was your house. Ridiculous. Ordinary people won't even find this place. You did approach me with a purpose. Did you put a tracker on me? I said no. Please listen to me. Do you want to die by my hands that badly? I mean, I mean, that'd be weird, but... <laughs> what? Since you came to this town, my body hasn't been normal for a single day. Why are you doing this to me? What do you want from me? Possibly your hand in marriage, sir? What's he babbling about? I can't understand a word he's saying. Since you've brought yourself here, I'll show you no mercy. Oh no! He took a syringe from somewhere and pressed it against my chin. You're gonna die by my hands today. Oh no, don't get me. Uh, is he crazy? Let go of me. <clears throat> no way! I struggled, but his grip was too tight. And for some reason, my chest began to feel that burning sensation again. <gasps> Don't stab me, bro! <sighs> uh oh. Damn. I knew it. I can smell that from you again. <laughs> he talks about scent with that face again. I couldn't tell why, but that expression on his face eased my fear. <sighs> I got up. Hold it in. I won't let you go again like yesterday. Now, run! I broke free of Enox. He couldn't react in time and dropped the syringe in his hand. Ugh! I just realized that the needle tip of that syringe was made of rubbery material and not sharp at all. Hmm? Why? He didn't really mean to kill me? Enox was still trying to catch me whilst panting desperately. You're not getting away from me! Oh no, don't get me. I shoved his hand from me and thrust the envelope in his face. Someone asked me to deliver this to you. Please, take it. My job is done. Huh? And, Mr. Enox, I don't know why you're so sensitive, but it's rude to pin someone against the wall suddenly. Even though I tried to explain, you just wouldn't listen. I was asked to deliver something to your house. I didn't even know you lived here. I'm sorry if I make you feel uncomfortable, but I don't think I deserve to be treated this way. I thought you were nice. It seems I was wrong. I took the handkerchief from my pocket, which I had washed this morning. Here. This is... I've watched it. Please take it, and I hope that we won't meet again. I walked towards the door without looking back. I was too angry to care about him trying anything. Hey! Bye! For good! What? Great! You better not show up again! You damn woman! <clears throat> yeah. Let's see what crap you brought me. <laughs> it's either just a big picture of a printed out middle finger. Or a big piece of paper that just says loser in big letters. Who sent that to me? Enox tore open the envelope angrily. To his surprise, there was only a handwritten letter inside. I've brought that girl to you. Are you happy with the delivery? <laughs> what the? Enox knew from a quick glance who had written the letter. Someone he despised intensely. Ah! Fucking asshole. Wait. So, I've blamed the wrong person? Damn. Uh, the 
whole house is filled with the scent of that woman. Again, excellent voice acting. Uh, my pants. Oh, no. Are you going to have to change your pants, sir? I returned to the office and saw the commission fee on the table. The amount was substantial, but it felt tainted to me now. Although I've only been a detective for a few years, I've encountered many situations where dangerous people have threatened me. I can't say you ever get used to that kind of thing. At least, I don't feel as shaken as an untrained civilian would in my shoes. However, the scene just now left me confused. Since the moment we first met, Enox had been saying things I couldn't understand. He was rude and unreasonable. Why would he treat me like that? I didn't do anything. What was all this talk about sense and that feeling in my chest? Hmm. Enox's blushing face lingered in my mind. Uh, did I overreact just now? Perhaps I hurt his feelings. No, lady, he disrespected you. You disrespected him back. No. What am I thinking? He almost killed me. Ugh. Darn it. It's time to forget about him. I've already given him back his things. I've got no connection with him anymore. I'd better focus on the investigation. A week later... All right, that's it for today. Let's get something to eat. Hmm? What's that sound? Did something fall? I looked around the room and saw a basket on the windowsill. Who put that there? Oh. I opened the window and saw a pink bear and a letter in the basket. I couldn't help but recall the broken window incident and was immediately on edge. I looked around and downstairs, but there was no one there. Did W send this? I opened the letter, and I couldn't believe the words written on it. Is it from Enox? To Miss Espoir. Sorry, Enox. Oh! <laughs> a week? It took you a week to apologize? <laughs> Fine. What? Huh? Am I reading this right? Is this from Mr. Enox? The Mr. Enox who's so sensitive and wanted to kill me? He's apologizing and giving me a teddy bear? Perhaps it's got a hidden camera? I checked the teddy bear, but I didn't find anything suspicious. Nor could I detect any hard objects inside. Is it really from Mr. Enox? Dane better not see that. It's from Enox. Speak of the devil. Hi? Did you receive it? Huh? Oh, you mean the pink bear and the letter. Okay, then. Why did you- Sorry. That's it. Oh. I stared blankly at the phone for a moment. Huh? I really don't get him. I stared at the teddy bear in my hand. My brain was a mess of static. Should I forgive him? Oh. Um, well, I don't know about you. Yeah, sure. All right, I guess. Took you long enough, but I guess. All right. Maybe he's just a bit atypical or bad at socializing. He doesn't seem to have full control of his actions. If he wasn't so paranoid all of the time, there might be a good person beneath it all. And he didn't really want to kill me, did he? But I don't think there's any reason to contact him again. Unless he's connected with the Heart Ripper case, or whoever commissioned me. <laughs> I guess not. I placed the teddy bear on the shelf. I had to admit, it was pretty darn cute. Oh. Oh. Oh my. Dane turned the shower on full blast until the water was loud enough to block out the noise in his head. I am looking disrespectfully, sir. Since his squad had come to this town, he needed to concentrate more than ever. <sighs> It had been two weeks since she moved here. Time passes so fast. In just two weeks, she'd met so many people already. The situation's harder to control than I thought. Zap! A huge scar suddenly appeared on Dane's left chest, glowing dimly. <gasps> Ooh. Every time the scar appeared, Dane suffered intense pain. Another one who can't learn it. 
this lesson. Uh oh. I gotta hurry. Mm -mm. I finally get you to this town to build our happy home. I won't let anyone get in our way. Oh. I need to get more serious. Danny Poo. In the rehearsal room, Soul's warm up had just finished. G Sharp was sitting on a couch while looking at the photos he just collected. <laughs> G Sharp, what are you looking at? You seem so happy. Hmm? I'm looking at my muse. Muse? You've got a new date? <laughs> Soon. I must make babe mine. Cute. Sid stood atop a building on the outskirts of Usador Town, silently observing from a distance. It's so foggy. No wonder I couldn't find it all this time. You standing on buildings like a ninja? It was from Clark. It was the third time he had called. Beep. Want me to stay out of it, huh? Unfortunately, I'm more of a stubborn type. I'll take that idiot back, even if I have to kidnap her. Well, Sid doesn't seem too bad, just a little bit forceful. A month later, I was already used to life in Usador Town. But there was no news of the Heart Ripper anymore. There were no new victims, but he was still out there, walking among us. What should I do? While I was pondering, I received three messages at exactly the same time. <laughs> little Bunny, are you available? There's a case I'd like your help with. I'd like to hire you as my temporary assistant. Reply to me, ASAP. Espoir, sorry for asking so suddenly, but would you come and help me at my store? Who should I reply to? Uh, Luke, uh, Dane, uh, Enox, or the save button? Ah! That's nice, I like that. I like that. At the, at the exact same time, fellas, please, I've gotta, I've gotta hold you back like Chris Pratt holding back three raptors. Then it neatly loops back to the, the title screen. I like that. I like that a lot. Well, that was the extended demo for Heart Cage. If you'd like to support the, vel the, de 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 the developer, there will be a link in the description to their Kickstarter. Or you can go do that. Keep in mind that this game is meant for adults and there is a not safe for work version. But I'm also interested to find out what exactly is going on here. What is this chosen one thing? Who is the murderer? Why is it a copycat? What chemicals is Enox dealing with? And why did it take a week for Enox to apologize? What's that scar on Dane's chest? But I'd also like to know what you think in the comments so you can write a comment down there and I will read it. But anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself, have a great night, and remember, there is always hope.